everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Kids Steam Crafter Noon with AHMFL. So my name is Miss Afton and I am the children's librarian here at the library. And today our Steam activity is a little complicated, but it's super cool. And I think it's pretty perfect for a nice hot summer. So today we are drawing our inspiration from for our Steam activity from the story, The Gingerbread Man. Now, if you're not familiar with The Gingerbread Man, it goes something like this. And now this is one that has some variations as well, but this is the gist. So there's a woman who decides to bake a special treat for her husband because he's been out working in the fields all day. So she bakes him a special man made out of gingerbread. So a gingerbread cookie in the shape of a man. But when she opens the oven, the gingerbread cookie pops out and runs out the door. So she chases after him because, of course, he's a treat for her husband, not, well, he's not supposed to be a living thing. So she runs after him to try to catch him, but he says, run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. So as he runs away from the house, he runs past the husband working in the field. The wife says, try to catch the gingerbread man. And so her husband joins her as they chase the gingerbread man through the fields. And of course he says again, run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. And so as he's running along, he passes all of these different people and animals. So some, in some stories, he passes a dog and the dog joins in passes a cow and the cow joins in. He passes a whole town full of people and all of the people in the town start chasing him because he looks so delicious and they'd like a tasty gingerbread treat until finally he comes to a river. And now being made of gingerbread, he knows that he can't swim because as soon as he gets in the water, the gingerbread will start to melt and fall apart. So luckily, a fox is nearby and the fox offers to give the gingerbread man a ride. Now the gingerbread man thinks that the fox is very kind and doesn't know that usually in stories, foxes are kind of tricksy. So the gingerbread man climbs on the fox's back and the fox starts swimming, leaving everyone else behind them on the riverbank. So as they're crossing the river, the water starts to get deeper and the fox tells the gingerbread man to crawl higher up onto his neck so that he doesn't get in the water. So the gingerbread crawls up onto the fox's neck and they keep swimming. Now the water starts to get deeper again, so the fox tells the gingerbread man to climb up on his head so that he'll be safe from the water. So the gingerbread man climbs up and they keep swimming, and then finally the water starts to get a bit deeper and the fox tells the gingerbread man to climb up higher onto his nose. And when the gingerbread man does, the fox flips his nose up in the air and catches the gingerbread man in his mouth eating the tasty gingerbread treat. So today, for our steam challenge, we need to figure out a different way for that gingerbread man to get across the river. A safer way for him to get across the river. So what we're going to be making are our very own gingerbread man paddle boats. And like I said, this one is a little complicated, but it has lots of variations and this is a great one to ask for some help. So this is a really fun one to do together. So let's get started on our gingerbread man paddle boats. All right, so to make our gingerbread man paddle boat, you can see that we've got some basic parts. First, we're going to start with our boat body. Then we need some sticks to create the structure that will hold our boat's propeller. You'll also need today if you're using one of our steam kits or not, you'll need to get some tape of some sort and your own boat body. So we recommend a water bottle, but it's up to you what you start with. All right, so let's see our supplies as they are. So first I have a water bottle. Now I'm using a short one, so it's easy to fit in my container, but you can use up to a two liter bottle. It's really up to you. You can even use a milk gallon if that's what you have at home. And if you don't have a bottle of some sort, then you can use a piece of foam. You can use a plastic tray from takeout for food. It's really up to you, anything that floats. So today our first scientific principle that we're using is buoyancy. Buoyancy is when something floats. Now, 
This has a little bit of water in it. I'm going to go ahead and drink that. But you'll also need, and this will be in your steam kit if you come get your kit from the library during our curbside pickup or during our library hours, you'll need two sticks of some sort. These are super long ones. All right, we're giving you really long ones in your steam kit today. That's because some of you might be making really big boats. Like I said, if you use a two liter bottle, then this might be about the right size. If you're using something small like mine, you can ask an adult or an older brother or sister to help you cut or break this. So you can actually snap these in half. You can see that's what I did on my boat. And then I just kind of tucked the pokey bits down. You can also add some tape on here if you want to. None of it was sharp at all. You'll also need today two plastic spoons. You'll need a rubber band or two. Mine are thin, but you can use the thick ones. All right, and we're going to be using these for our second scientific principle. So our second scientific principle today is talking about energy, and we're going to be using potential energy and kinetic energy. So we'll talk about that at the end. Last but not least, you'll also need tape. Now I have some fun colored duct tape. If you have some of this at home, perfect. If you don't, just get some tape that will work in water. All right, so some waterproof tape of some sort. All right, now let's get started. First, let's clear our space so we're ready to build. So I finished the water in my water bottle and I put the cap on again so it's nice and tight. All right, nice and tight. And most of the water should be out of it. If you want to put a little bit of water in to help it kind of stay balanced in your water, so in the pond or the container that you test it later, that's okay but you can test that afterward. All right, now that we've got our water bottle, I made sure to take the label off because my next step is going to be to tape my sticks on the sides. If you leave the label on, it will probably be okay, but the tape may stick to the label and not to the actual plastic. So I'd suggest just taking it off. Again, since my water bottle is really small, I took my stick, I took one of my sticks and broke it in half. And I tried to make these as much the same length as I could. All right, now if they're not perfect, that's okay. All right, we can adjust it as we build our boat. And now that I have one piece, so one wooden stick making two pieces for my boat, I can actually use the second stick and break that one and make a second boat. So pretty cool. All right, I'm going to use my tape and I'm going to tape these sticks so that one goes on either side of the water bottle, okay? The thing to look out for here is really the back end. We want these to be about opposite on either side. The more even you can make them, the better. All right, but we need to make sure that we have plenty of space on the back for our spoon paddles. So we also want to try to make sure that these are pretty even in the back here. Again, if it's not perfect, that's okay. This could be one of those really cool experiments where you try different styles and see what works best, especially since you have two extra long sticks. If you break them, then you have an extra boat that you can build. So let's get taping. All right, so you can see that I put my two sticks on by using smaller pieces of tape and I tried to line them up as best as I could as I was taping. It looks like this one is a little bit longer, so I might try to push that up a little bit or take the tape off and just put it down again so it's a little more even. Like I said, we don't need perfection here. All right, we just need it to be close. All right, now that I've got my two sides down, I'm going to add one more big piece of tape the whole way around. All right, taping done. I've got a big piece the whole way around and my two sticks are on nice and tight. Again, I have some broken edge sticking out on either piece. If you are concerned about this, you can just take some of the duct tape and put a little piece around and it'll block that off. All right, so pretty easy to get rid of. Now. Our next step is going to need our two plastic spoons and we're going to need to do a little bit more breaking. So this is another good one to ask your parents for help. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my spoon propeller. Now you can see in my example from the boat that I already made, 
I'm just using the actual spoon scoop from each of these. So we'll need to break or cut off the handles. Then we'll use a little bit more duct tape and put the middles together. You can also use hot glue if you have a hot glue gun, or again, remember any of that waterproof tape will be fine. So let's break off the handle. All right, now this one is pretty tough to break. The plastic is pretty hard. So be careful when you break it that you can wear safety glasses if you have them or turn your head away and while you crack it. Or like I said, again, it's good to ask for help. You can also use a pair of scissors if you have them or an adult can use a pair of scissors. And we're just going to break with a little bit of that handle left on there. Whoop. So that broke a little high up. All right, not ideal. I think it's actually easier to just break it with your hands, but you have to press pretty hard. Now we're going to take our two spoon pieces and we're going to tape them together, like I said. But let's look at our example first. So if I have these two sitting with the scoops facing up, what do you think is going to happen when we put our boat in the water? All right, so if they're in this way, if we put them in to start paddling, one of them is going to be facing backwards and one is going to be facing forward. So what we need to do is take one spoon and put it scoop bottom down and then we need to take the other one and turn it the opposite direction. So it's going to look like one is upside down and one is right side up. Looks good. Now let's get some more tape. All right, I have one piece of tape. I'm gonna add another one to go over there to help make it extra strong, especially since this one spoon broke a little bit. So I'll just add another extra piece. So we'll wrap that around and press it down. All right, now my propeller should be ready to go. If you have any sharp edges that are kind of still poking out, you can use another piece of tape. All right, it's up to you when you think it's ready. Now, we have our boat body. Again, a water bottle works well for this, or you can use like a piece of styrofoam or a plastic tray, up to you. We've got our two boat props, so the two legs on the end that will hold our propeller. We have our propeller prepared and ready to go. Now it's time to add our motor. So our, mo oh. I just flung that away. Good thing I've got an extra. Our motor today is made with a rubber band. So for your motor, you can just put the rubber band over the two legs of your boat. Then put your propeller inside and you can test which direction works better. It depends on which direction you want your boat to go. I'm going to put it so that my spoon will be twisting down. So I'll put the spoon through the middle of the rubber band and now it's time to twist. And this is another thing that you can test out. So when we're twisting, I tw take the spoon and I twist back. The reason is because what we want to try to do is we want the rubber band to untwist itself by going forward. So I'm going in the opposite direction to twist. So I'll twist it back. Now, remember how I said we're using potential and, kinet and kinetic energy. What we're doing right now is we are building the potential energy. Now the word potential means something that really hasn't happened yet, but it's waiting and it's there and ready. So our energy is doing that. You can see with all of the twisted rubber band, all of that is stored energy. That's ready when you let go to snap the spoon around. So we're storing up our potential energy. As soon as we let go of the spoon, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's check it out. Oh, pretty cool. So our spoon propeller went around like a real propeller, changing that potential energy into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy means moving energy. So as soon as our rubber band started unwinding, we got that spinning movement with our kinetic energy. So you can put this back in and then when you are ready, when your potential energy is held in place, you can set it in the water and let it go. My rubber band is pretty skinny and long. And since my water bottle is really small, that means that my rubber band is really loose. 
So if yours is like mine, you can actually take your rubber band and double it. Now, how do you think that changes my potential energy? Yeah, I'm going to have double the potential energy because it has a lot more tension. So it's a lot kind of stronger and a lot more tense. So if I do the same thing, now I'll put my spoons in the middle and wind them backwards. And I'm getting lots of really tight coils. It's starting to get slower and a little bit harder to twist because I've got that double rubber band. Let's see what happens when I let go. Whew, super fast. And it had so much energy that it was letting go, that moving kinetic energy that it actually went in the opposite direction too. Let's see what happens when we go to some water. All right, we have our water container. Now mine is a bit small, so I'd suggest if you have like a pond or a really calm stream or something nearby, if you have a bigger amount of water or even a bathtub, I test it in that. All right, but we've got our water bottle. I have my propeller wound, so my potential energy is ready. Let's put it in the water and see what happens. Whoop! Ah! All right, so because my container is so small, it can't really go anywhere. But you can see it's trying to push the bottle through the water. So each time the rubber band untwists one more time, it's another scoop of water. It's pushing past the bottle to move the boat forward. Again, the bigger your water container, the better this will work and the more it'll push around. Pretty fun stuff. But our potential energy is just about done. So you can see that the tension is left, the rubber band is getting loose again, so our kinetic energy has stopped. Time to wind it again. So pick it up out of the water, wind it again, and let it go again. So we hope that you enjoyed our Gingerbread Man propeller boat. All right, again, this is not the easiest of our steam challenges this summer, but it is a really fun one. So this is a great one to ask for help if you need it, but Remember, you can share your results with us in our comments on Facebook or with me, Miss Afton, at afrancis at ahmfl.org to get a secret code worth 30 bonus points. Plus, we just love to see the creation that you make. So we're excited to see some different boat designs and some different results. We'd especially love to see videos of your propeller boat at work. So we hope that you enjoy this activity and join us next week for our very last Kids Steam Crafter Noon with AHMFL.